Okay, it's Did recording. Sound all right? Yeah, it okay. sounds great. Um, so I'll start. Uh, hi, my name is Zoe Hinton. I'm here with Lizzie as usual. Hi. And we also have a guest today who I'll let introduce himself. Hi, I'm Jake Stetler. I'm a writer and director of independent feature films, and as well as co-host of a Star Wars podcast called RebelChatter.com, and I host that with my son, Caden Stetler. So, uh, yeah, actually, um, I met Jake at an event he did, because you do a charity event every year. Yeah, actually, um, my son, um, he, he's passionate about three things, basically. He's passionate about people, and he's passionate about um, Star Wars. Probably that's, that's what he's most passionate about, to be <laughs> truthful. Uh, and he, he calls all the time in the middle of the night to say, hey, guess what I just heard about Star Wars? This is canon now. Stuff like that. Anyway, um, and then the other thing he's passionate about is um, uh, he's worried about the homeless and people going hungry. I remember when he was a little guy, uh, about four years old, he saw a homeless man, and he was just like, Dad, why is that guy outside? And it bothered him for days. And now he's a chef by trade, and uh, so he created Rebel <laughs> Cause um, himself, and, uh, um, Rebel Cause Lancaster on Facebook, and it's a... Uh, it's a charity that, first, it's about fans, about Star Wars fans getting together, uh, trivia and gaming. We play um, X-Wing, and we also um, have um, some cosplay, different things like that. But we raise money, uh, and the money goes to directly to uh, the homeless in Lancaster. Uh, we sponsored a family for Christmas last year. Um, it was in need. We, uh, he gave to um, the Water Street Rescue Mission. He's um, created uh, kits to give out to homeless people, you know, that he sees on the streets um, as well. And, uh, but on top of that, we have a great time, and we met Mike and Zoe at one of our events. We're having another one in November. Caden tries to have them fairly regularly, a couple times, uh, maybe every couple months. And, uh, and then we... As a result of that, we started doing a podcast um, called rebelchatter.com, and we did that mostly because, um, I guess, there's so many Star Wars podcasts, but I guess our take on it is to find out how people discovered Star Wars and what it means to them, to them personally, and how, you know, uh, how they came to it, and their Star Wars story is how we, how we phrase it. But it's another excuse, too, for me and him to... Just get since he's out of the house now to get together and and talk geek geek <laughs> language. <laughs> yeah, and of um, I would just I just like to brag, but I did win the trivia last year at Rebel Cause. You did. So <laughs> you did. You uh, it's um, which is pretty impressive because Caden uh, pretty much deems himself the head of I mean not the head of the uh, trivia. Yeah, I don't know, master, if you will. <laughs> uh, he he is always like he used to carry around the Star Wars like uh, it was like a game, it was a trivia game. I can't remember what it, maybe it was trivia pursuit, but it was something all Star Wars and just and like he pr pr could pretty much get all of them. I mean, knowing details like model numbers to stuff and all that type of thing. So when you started answering some of the ones he thought he was going to stump the audience with, <laughs> he met his match. He met his match that night. And so, yeah, we were really impressed. And, in fact, that's how, really, we made that connection, you know, with you and your dad and talked about uh, this this podcast here and and uh, started sharing some of your uh, cosplay stuff and some of the maker-type uh, uh, costumes and helmets and weapons and stuff that your dad builds. Yeah, the event last year was a lot of fun. And anyone that's in the area listening, you should, like, totally come to it because I also – Learned how to play X-Wing there, and that was fun, too. So it's a lot of fun, and it's for a good cause, so you should definitely come. Yeah, it's, it's just nice to get together with um, like-minded people, and you know, it's fun to you know connect on Facebook with people. And uh, He pretty much runs our Facebook page, and I run Twitter and just keep the website going, and I produce a podcast side of it, and he just calls in. Or sometimes we do, do it... Uh, both here and, and we have somebody call in. So far, our best guest, um, well, not best guest, that really means it's kind of derogatory to all our rest of guests, but uh, 
the most closely related to the Star Wars uh, universe has been, uh, yeah, that fast, I lost his name, uh, <laughs> Ro- Roger, oh, that fast, I'm, oh, come on. He, well, he was the Academy Award winner of set dressing for A New Hope. And he was the, um, also received a uh, Academy Award for set dressing for Alien. He basically invented that the whole idea of like the dark future, uh, the idea that um, Roger Christian, sorry, Robert Christian is his name. Uh, and uh, he was a fascinating guest. Uh, he, he created the first lightsaber. Um, he created R2-D2 and 3PO. I mean, Kate and I were geeking out. I could barely, <laughs> I could barely speak to him at first because, you know, because he's a filmmaker as well. He wrote, he had um, directed a film, a short film called Black Angel, and it was kind of a legend for a while because it used to, when Empire Strikes Back first came out in Europe, it played before Empire Strikes Back, and a lot of fans remembered that film and wanted to see it again, and it was lost, I guess, for a long time. And a couple of years ago, they found it, and uh, you know, you know, kind of promoted it and stuff, and he's going to do a, a feature film. So he came on our uh, web, yeah, our uh, podcast to kind of talk about that as well. You know, give us a little bit of history about working with George Lucas and working with uh, um, Tony Scott, not Tony Scott, one of the Scott brothers for <laughs> Alien. Um, and uh, it was pretty, it was pretty amazing. Uh, so, yeah, hit me in with another question. I don't know. <laughs> um, I'm not sure how many questions I have. Uh, so. I can tell you about my new project, I guess. Oh, it's not right. really Star Wars related, but I mean, I was inspired by Star Wars to be a filmmaker. So pretty much um, everything since I saw Star Wars, I'm a little bit older than you guys. I saw Star Wars um, for the first time at five years old in 77. So... <laughs> And actually, Caden's birthday, March 25th, so Caden has all these weird connections to Star Wars. Um, but uh, since then, I, I just loved filmmaking. I love films. I love storytelling. And I love mythology. And Joseph Campbell was one of my favorite. Um, he wrote a bunch of books like The Power of Myth and The Hero with a Thousand Faces. And I found out later that Lucas was inspired by him, him to make Star Wars. The you know the original so uh, around the time I was in the military I was a paratrooper um, in the army and I, I mean, quite literally had an epiphany after I jumped out of an airplane when the chute opened I was drifting down to earth and I thought oh my gosh my whole life revolved around storytelling so I thought I want to be a filmmaker I mean I've been writing forever <laughs> I'm gonna write screenplays I'm gonna be a movie maker and that's my journey so far so I've made one feature film. Um, in some shorts. The feature film is called a no, no Sanctuary, and that premiered in 2013. And we're currently working on a new film, and it's we're crowdfunding and crowdsourcing it on seedandspark.com, um, and that's called Astray Ember, and that's about... Um, it's going to be a thriller and a road movie, so it's not really Star Wars related, but uh, it's definitely something I think people will connect with. Um, it's about the agoraphobic victim of a home invasion who seeks the shelter of a RV, of a, mo- of a motorhome, and she uh, encounters other people who live off the grid. Um, and then she meets a man, a self-reliant man, who reawakens her trust, and, and but someone from her past threatens her newfound freedom. So it's a thriller. Um, it's a ro- quirky mo- road movie, but it's also... A way to uh, explore things like the tiny house movement and uh, off-grid living and people who live in yurts and storage container homes and and all sorts of RVs and van dwelling and that type of thing. Um, so we're shooting that in central Pennsylvania, and we're part of a we're crowdfunding on Seed and Spark, but it's also a um, excuse me. <clears throat> we're also part of a rally. Uh, sponsored by Mark and Jay Duplass. They're like indie filmmakers and Seed and Spark, and it's called the Hometown Heroes. So if you had a 
local based crew and you're shooting in your home state and home city you could be a part of this and uh so it's kind of a competition we need to get a, a following of 500 um people to even qualify and we're currently at 323 i believe so um if any of your listeners would be motivated we'd appreciate it if you went to uh either uh stray ember movie dot com and then there's a link there, um, the Seed and Spark link. You can just—it's a short link you can click, or if you wanted to go directly there, it's um, seedandspark.com/fund f-u-n-d slash stray dash ember, um, or just go to seedandspark.com and t- uh, in the search bar put uh, a stray ember, and uh, there's just a button next to it, kind of like Facebook. You follow, and you can follow. You can sign in with your Facebook credentials or. You can put your name, uh, email, and city, and follow, follow, and find. You know, watch as we make an independent feature film, as we uh, bring the story to life. And if people are motivated too, they can put a modest pledge because we're trying to uh, get the green light as well. Um, so, yeah, we just had a Facebook Live, and um, that was pretty successful. And Mike uh, had found us there. Uh, that's Zoe's dad. And uh, they invited me on the show. So I appreciate you guys letting me come on. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. It was fun. Sure. Is there any other questions you have for me about that or about uh, Rebel Chatter? I can't think of any. Lizzie, do you have any? Um, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> like my favorite, favorite Star Wars character or anything? Oh, Star okay. Wars questions related? like that. Uh, who is your favorite yeah, Star yeah, Wars yeah. character? <laughs> uh, R2-D2. Really? Hands down, R2-D2. Yes, R2-D2 is my favorite. I love that droid. <laughs> and then uh, I'd say Luke is close second. Third is Boba Fett. That's my top three. I don't think and I've ever Empire's... heard... What's that? I don't think I've ever heard someone say like their favorite Star Wars character of all time was R2-D2. That's interesting. Oh, cool. I, no, yeah. It's, I love the... I, I love the... I don't know. I just, R2, I think, is the coolest character <laughs> in the film. I mean, he ba- basically watched. I mean, he basically experiences the whole universe, yeah. you know, in a way. And uh, the design, I think, is amazing. And I don't know. Yeah, it's not like I identify with him or anything. You know, yeah. But, <laughs> but you know, of course, Luke was. I have pictures of me in handmade Luke Skywalker costumes that my grandmother hand stitched. And I mean, they were amazing. They they would they would hold up for cosplay. Definitely, they were. Pretty, pretty accurate. She had no idea what she was making, but I showed her pictures. And <laughs> Sometimes. But back then, lightsabers were just, back, back then, lightsabers were, just, were like inflatable ones. I don't know if you've ever seen those. I it, it was a hard handle, but it was an inflatable lightsaber. It was pretty, <laughs> pretty, well, it didn't hold up to did think, nowadays. With a, I think sometimes when, like, when you're getting a costume made, sometimes getting someone who's never done costume clothes before is, like, one of the best ways to do it because they're just going to, make what they see where like costume people will like might try to change it to something oh yeah that's a good yeah that's a good point because like she also made um my little i have two little sisters well not so little anymore but uh my sister jess is a year younger than me and she played leia and had a cute uh leia costume (laughs) as well and then and then my sister jamie is four years younger than me and she was like two at the time or something i don't even remember and we made her a Jawa. <laughs> she's about the cutest Jawa ever. Like, I mean, we didn't do anything with the eyes or anything. She just basically has a little brown cloak, her cur- red little red curls sticking out from underneath the, the hood, and she's about the cutest Jawa you ever saw. But uh... <laughs> so, you guys excited for Last Jedi? I'm very excited. I'm excited for the trailer too. It's been a while until, I know. since we got one. Um, Hopefully, October October ninth, right? Yeah, that's the thing. It's during a uh, football thing. I don't, I don't know sports, but... <laughs> Which makes no sense at all, right? I mean, like, really, that makes no sense at all. But they should they should go after something else. I don't know why. I mean, they should have shown it at New York Comic Con, right? You yeah, know, would make you'd think sense. they would. I, um, that's my mom's birthday, so that's, you know, two things. Oh, cool. <laughs> this is, like... October 9th. This coming week is going to be pretty awesome because October 9th, the Lost Jedi trailer... 
Then October 10th, um, new Overwatch event, which I don't know if you guys... I know Lizzie doesn't. I don't know if you play Overwatch, but I love it. And then Friday... Overwatch. I, I'm familiar with it, but I don't, I'm not sure. Yeah. And then um, Friday is Voltron Season 4 comes out on Netflix. And then... My, on, two, my two younger sons, Finn and August, love Voltron. Really? It's, it's great. They love it. <laughs> they, they, I mean, I... My, again, this all goes back to my grandma for some reason, but my uncle Marshall had a, uh, a Voltron, original Voltron toy. Like, I wish I still had it. <laughs> I used to play with it all the time. I had no idea what it was at the time I was little, but uh, but they, they just started buying the lion. They're, they're trying to build their own Voltron here. Nice. And then on Monday, yeah. Rebels comes out, so it's like good week coming up. Yeah, yeah. Your namesake, I guess, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sabine, right? Yep. Okay, so I didn't watch. Uh, don't don't uh, hate me, but I didn't watch the uh, Clone Wars. Uh, I, I mean, I've seen pieces of it because Kane shows me pieces of them, but I just I haven't been able to invest that much time into seeing that whole, you know, that whole thing yet. But I've been watching Rebels up to I'm like halfway through. Like Kane's been like feeding me the DVDs. You gotta watch <laughs> these Rebels. And Sabine's my favorite character character on Rebels. She, she's the best, of course. Yeah, hands down. <laughs> I'm not sure about, what the hell is the droid's name? Chopper. Chopper. Chopper, yeah. I'm not sure about Chopper yet. Aw. We'll see. Aww. Maybe we'll grow on me. I, like, I guess it's because I like R2-D2 too much. Chopper is <laughs> like the anti-R2. R2 yeah, just exactly. wants to, you know, help people, help his friends. He wants to be, you know, good. And then Chopper, he has his own agenda. If Hera, nice. if it's not Hera telling him to do it, Chopper doesn't want to do it. <laughs> Yeah, so that, that, I think they've been pretty pretty faithful. And they've been pretty... Um, they've done some interesting stories with Rebels. And, uh, you know, Caden and I always debate how they could improve the old, you know, different... and Improve the movies in different storytelling ways, like, um, you know, especially the prequels. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, we always talk about what we would do if we... If they gave me... Since I'm a director, it'd be... I would love to direct one of the spinoff films, Boba yeah. Fett. That's, like, the dream. Ob or Obi-Wan. Either one. I'd do either one of those. Hands down. Um, actually, Caden did... He does posts on Facebook, and one of those, like, if you could do one of the spinoff movies, like, th with three minor characters, you know, what would that be? And I, w I didn't put it on, because, but I was jokingly going to put on, like, a road movie with uh, uh, Salisha's Crumb, Wicket, and Jar Jar, or some kind of... <laughs> three worst characters. But, um... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I would love to tell a Star Wars story. Kate and I had an idea about doing like a Seven Samurai type of Jedi film one time. That would be really cool if we could. It's so if uh, Kathleen, if Kathleen uh, Kennedy's listening to your podcast, get her, you know, get her in touch with me. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, so hey, how far are have, you on Rebels? I think I'm. About to start the third season, yeah. I think I saw okay. the first two seasons. It's going on the fourth, right? Yeah, uh, season four is yeah. starting. Yeah, I, first, I watched the first two seasons then, yeah. And season four oh, is sadly uh, the last season. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Huh. Well, maybe after Rebels ends and you catch up, you'll be able to watch Clone Wars. I will. I will I, I'll make that, since you guys recommend it, I'll make that my... <laughs> You know, in the, in the winter when it gets slow, or when I'm working on pre-production for a stray Amber, I'll do that. I'm I couldn't even like imagine watching Rebels without Clone Wars personally because there's so many Reb Clone Wars characters in Rebels. I feel like it would be harder to get. Oh, like Hondo well, yeah, and Rex and like Ahsoka. He, oh, really? They all have uh, see see that? Then I'll have to definitely maybe maybe I should catch up with Clone Wars before I finish the last two seasons maybe, of Rebels yeah. to get Hondo is get fantastic in Clone Wars. It's it's great. <laughs> yeah, Caden would sit me down and say, "You got to watch this. You know, just watch this ten minutes of this season, or I mean, of this episode, or you got to see this." And just show me like all these cool different bits of of some of the Clone Wars. But I never committed to the whole thing yet. But I will. So, uh, well, I'll let you guys go. But uh, if again, I appreciate you um, bringing me on the show, and maybe we can have a uh, a crossover event sometime with our podcast. And, uh, you know, get Caden in the mix, too, and we can find a topic and debate it to death and, you know, talk Star Wars. 
That sounds fun. And I'm going to say this because Lizzie is refusing to say it, but she wanted to point <laughs> out that in one of the season three episodes, there's a lot of seven sam- samurai references. Really? Nice. Yes. Yeah, because, yes. uh, well, my two favorite things are gunslingers and samurai, so so anything that, and pretty much Star Wars is pretty much a, a western in space, and they have the Jedi are pretty much samurai, so I think that's probably yeah. why I was attracted to them in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> and not not to bring up Overwatch again, but in Overwatch, there's a character who is a gunslinger and another character who is a samurai. So, well, kind of. He's Japanese and has a samurai sword. So, nice. I um <laughs> one of my coworkers talks Overwatch, so um I'll check it out. You have to send me some links or whatever and see what. Yeah. You know, I can so I can be more familiar with that when we uh, have our crossover <laughs> podcast event. <that>. It's great. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Um, I'll, I'll send you um. Some, the links to that if your listeners want to follow us on Seed and Spark for Stray Ember and uh, that way you can put it on in your show notes if that's cool with you yeah that, that's great okay well uh, Kate and I always say may the force be with you at the end of the episode and I always say and also with you so that I'm gonna, that's how I'm going to that's how I'm going to sign off alright so may the All right, force be care. with you Thank you. I'm also with you. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye. Thank, thank you. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Okay. So that was, um, you know, that was Jake Settler. And, you know, he's really cool. You should listen to his podcast. It's a, it's a fun time. And, um, yeah. I actually, oh, I should have said this. But, um,. I always thought, because I don't know if I've told you this before, but when I went to that event, I thought it was kind of funny because in th- they're like the two podcast co-hosts, and the one is a filmmaker and the other one's a chef, and I was like, hey, Lizzie's a chef and I want to be a filmmaker. <laughs> I just always thought that was funny. Good job. <laughs> but, he mentioned the Seven Samurai, and he was like, I want to interpret that in there, and I was like, oh. Huh. Rebel says stuff like you that. You should have said it, Lizzie. I can't say anything because he, he, he hasn't gone to that part. You could have mentioned it. Like, oh, well, you know, whatever. Anyway, we have stuff to talk about ourselves. Like, cause there's uh-huh. lots of Star Wars news. Lots and lots. So, <laughs> <laughs> the, all right, so these are actually notes. I, all right, I made these notes, like, last week because I thought we were podcasting last week, and then there's, like, a miscommunication, apparently, that no one told me about until I sat there at my computer for 30 minutes. I was like, yeah, Lizzie's not going to come on, is she? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay, then. But, um, <laughs> but I did update them now, so we're, we're good. <laughs> there's miscommunications. <laughs> Those are always fun. At first, we have helmet bags that we got from uh, actually a friend of ours. He's in our garrison, and his name is Wally, and he creates personalized helmet bags. And um, his name's Wally Peters, and we'll put like links and stuff, I guess, in the show description thingies. But yeah, because um, my sister got one, and she got one for Ketsu, and it's really awesome. My dad got one for his stormtrooper. And then I got one for Sabine, but then they were taking a while. I mean, they usually don't take a while, but stuff happened. So, and it took a while, so he was like, I'm sorry, I'll throw in a free bag. What do you want a bag for? And my dad's like, well, we're running out of helmets, so we'll get one for Lizzie. (laughs) So now me and Lizzie have matching bags. Yay. (laughs) Now we're matching Sabine's, and they're really awesome and really, like, they're good bags, and you should should get one because they're cool. I mean, get one if you have a helmet. If you don't have a helmet, then it's just a bag. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, I guess you could use it as, like, just a bag. Like, for a purse. But they don't really have, like, you know, compartments like a purse would, so... It'd be yeah. a messy purse. <laughs> <laughs> could use it as a backpack. Yeah, I, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, if you have a helmet, or... More than one helmet, you should get it, because they're cool. Hux gel. <laughs> Lizzie has Hux gel. Yes. And then, also we <laughs> talked about this earlier, but an episode 8 trailer is coming October 9th during 
that sports that they sometimes release Star Wars trailers during. <laughs> All I can think is like the dancing shark and <laughs> Oh no no. <laughs> the shark. I only ever care about football when there's Star Wars trailers or when someone I like is doing the halftime show at the Super Bowl. But that's it. Uh, Otherwise, I, I, I don't care. Shark. And Lizzie likes the sharks. No, I don't like it. It's, <laughs> just, it's funny. And so, yeah, that's that news. Not much there because the trailer doesn't exist yet. I mean, it probably exists. We just haven't seen it. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely, like, probably been edited together by now. We just... I'll stop talking. Um, so... <laughs> there's some new episodes of Forces of Destiny. There's four. I don't know if there's more, because I missed the, uh, 30-minute special thing. I was away from the house, and I didn't get to see it, and I'm very... I'm a sad Zoe. I'm sorry, sad But <laughs> I did see the ones that they released... So there are four. There's Tracker Trouble about Ray, and there was a tracker on the ship. It's kind of, and, and, they the had... tra- and the tracker was a bomb. And Finn was in it! I love Finn. <laughs> he was a dummy. He wasn't a dummy. He just didn't know. A dummy? <laughs> no! Do not call Finn a dummy. Get out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Han and Chewie were also in it. I, w- I really wish there was credit, so I want to know who, like, if Harrison Ford was Han or, like, some other dude was Han. Uh, it wasn't Han. It wasn't? Okay. I mean, I figured it wasn't, but still. I no. want to know. It's not. I still want to know. Was John Boyega Finn? Hopefully. I don't know. But the next one was newest recruit, and this is my new favorite. Because it's Sabina Ketsu. Mm -hmm. It's great. Safi loves it too. Because, well, Safi's Ketsu. (laughs) And I was like, (laughs) after I watched it, I was like, hey, Dad, are you going to make Safi a new um, Ketsu shoulder pad? And he was like, "Uh, why? And I was like, well, because in the Force of the Destiny, Sabine paints her like a new symbol. And he just goes, ah, Sabine. (laughs) (laughs) She's already changing her own costume enough now. She's changing other costumes. <laughs> she's infectious. Yeah. And uh it was a good episode. Hera was there, so that was cool. I like Hera. Yeah, well, there was a cute little baby. It, uh, was it cute? It was <laughs> cute. Yeah, I thought it, it was, was cute. Uh, yeah. When it made a noise, I was like, oh, it's so cute. And then, like, later, I didn't care. <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, dude, what about the supplies? Well, Just shove the kid back in the box and take the supplies. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but then you freak out you about Padme win. and the babies. <laughs> you win. Both win. <laughs> okay. Just saying. And then teach you I will. That made me cry, but that's because, like, pretty much anything with a circle will make me cry. So that wasn't a surprise. It was good. And Anakin and Soka were... They were training and then Yoda was like, Hey, what's up? And then they were training. Yeah. That was that one was cute. I also like Starfighter stunt. Because it was Padme and Ahsoka being buddies. Mm, wait, what? The Starfighter stunt? Oh, yeah, yeah, I think, okay. yeah. I was, I, was, I was confused for a second. Yeah, I watched that. And then Soka was, and then the, the droid shot at Padme, and Soka just kind of like, no! Yeah. I don't know. It was cool. I liked them. They were all very good. I don't know what to say. I'm running out of words, apparently. Good job. <laughs> uh, do you have anything to say about them? Mmm... No. No? Okay. So then Battlefront 2, there was a Battlefront 2 trailer thing with John Boyega narrating it. It wasn't really much new, just showing us how awesome it is. Uh-huh. And John Boyega was telling us how awesome it is, which is always good. John Boyega's good. John Boyega's nice. Yeah. John Boyega's amazing. 
He's he's a sweet little cinnamon roll. He's a good boy, Ega. <laughs> Hi, Lizzie. No. no. Okay, I'm sorry. But then oh. also, the beta came out this weekend. Well, yeah. And have you played the beta at all? Uh, I played it for five minutes before I started podcasting. Oh. I'm sorry for interrupting and your beta I got to English. play as most of the people, thankfully. I wasn't a hero, but... I know. played for, like, lots of hours last night with my friend. Because we tried lots to play the one night, and then I was busy. And we tried to play the next night, and then he was busy. So then last night, we were about to play, and then he was busy. And then we were about to play, but then I had to leave. And then I got home and was like, okay, we are playing. So we played until, like... 11 at night, so we played for like 5 hours, we played on Naboo, and we played on Takadana, which is only 2 maps in the beta. Wow. It was really Wish fun. Was time? I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had off school yesterday. It was so, it was, a, I don't know. Why were you off school? Because they had an in-service, and then also on Monday we're off for genocide day. So, Chris, Columbus Day. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we didn't even get And, um, but yeah, the beta, it's really good. There's lots of leaves. I like the leaves. They're all like, whoo, yeah. so cool. <laughs> I love it. And you cannot shoot the people that are running around. Yeah, I don't think... I mean... Like, the civilians, you can't shoot them. Yeah, why, why would you? Well, I wanted... I just wanted to see what would happen. And it wouldn't let me shoot them. Good job, sir. It was sad. Well, I couldn't shoot the birdies, either. It was disappointing. is not Tomb Raider. <laughs> In Tomb Raider, I just kill the birds all the time. I get experience points and I get my arrows back. So it just. It just. Oh, but I the just wanted to shoot the birdies. Fly. Shoot some birds. Oh, and the crabs, too. You just kind of shoot it with a gun and it'll just, like, <laughs> twitch and, like. <laughs> it's, it's creepy, but it's cute, too. Um. I was like. I, the game made me sad, like, because I was walking. There's, like, a bunch of stormtroopers, or not stormtroopers, clone troopers, like, on their knees with, like, battle droids, like, ready to execute them. It made me sad. You, you were a sad Zoe? Yeah. It's, it is, because it's a beta. It's very glitchy. <laughs> yep. Because, um, like, at one point, okay, so I, on the Naboo map, you know, when, like, the tank gets to the temple and blows it up? I had a ten- I have a tendency to not- Okay, I'm not very good at the game. And I'm not very good at the other battlefront either. I'm- I'm awful. But, um... Anyway, I have a tendency to stand in the wrong place and I kept getting crushed by the rocks when it destroys the palace. <laughs> so, that happened. But the one time it happened, it was like, bar buried like shoulders deep in the rocks and the head of the person was like twitching and like glitching around it was really weird and then another That's all my dad watch is just battlefront fails over and over <laughs> and then um later uh i was gonna say something later um i was in the temple and for some reason glitched that it was completely pitch black like inside of it so I was running around, I had no idea what was going on, I kept dying, I blew myself up a couple times, I was so confused, and I was like, it's so dark in here, why is it so dark in here? My friend was like, it's not, it's not dark, what are you talking about? It was, it was distressing, I was scared. And then later, he got hit by an ion, the grenade thingy, and his character's head came off. Like, he was still alive, but the head popped off and was, like, floating a little bit above the body. <laughs> like, he was running around <laughs> with his head off. Because he, pl he plays in third person, because he's a freak. 
but um, <laughs> sorry to anyone that plays in third person. But he sent me a picture of it. He took a picture of it and he sent it to me. I'll show it to Lizzie, but no one else can see it. Oh my god! His <laughs> head just popped off and was like floating. It was it was wild, but it's a fun game. It's fun. I kept getting distracted on Takadana because I would just go up to the top of the of the palace and just stare at all the flags. Yeah, but it's fun. And I think everyone should try the beta before it goes away. Yeah. Yeah. Lizzie? You might play it after we're done podcasting, yes? You should, it's very good. Uh, do you have any more words about it? No. No. Why is my camera going all weird? I don't know. I don't think hitting it is going to help. <laughs> But, um, okay, so the next thingy we have is the new Rebels poster. Thingy, Lizzie. I'm trying, I don't know what to I, do. I don't, just leave it, it's fine. <laughs> anyway, there's a new like... Rebels poster, and it's awesome. It's really bothering me. Just, just, just deal with it, Lizzie. Okay, there we go. It always does that. Have you never noticed it before? It always does that. that. See, now it's not doing it. I don't know. Anyway, here's the poster. It's... Pull it up, Lizzie, so we can discuss it. The... The the what? The poster. There's a link on the notes. It's beautiful. I love it. It's my it's the my lo- it's my hero- what? Yeah. The what? The rebels poster. It's I my can't... uh it's my home screen on my phone. I changed it as soon as I saw it. I was like, okay, this is it. This is what I need to well, do. It looks cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Her hair is purple. I told I told my dad. What did he say? Well, it was not purple. What the tips? He th- he was like, well, I don't know what it is. I'm like, it's purple. Was there a whole it thing? Looks, is like purple and like just hello. the bottom part with the ghost crew. It kind of looks like like an awkward family photo, and they all except for Zeb, they all like forgot to smile when the person took the picture. That's what it looks like. Gotcha. <laughs> now that's stuck in my head. <laughs> they're wolf. I okay so every season I'm like I'm like okay this Sabine is my favorite every season and I'm trying really hard to not do that this season so it doesn't seem like I just like the newest one but I really really like this season that's what you said last season I know and I'm trying not to like it more than the other season but it's hard (laughs) hard Uh, uh, you know she has black pants what Hold on, I got an ad thing. I have to wait for it to go away. Good job, Zoe. It God. just popped up. <laughs> it's not my fault. She doesn't. She does. She, she does. She does, Zoe. It's the same as her shirt. But. Uh. I need to look at this now. I can't. It's, the season's not out yet. I, I can't look at it. But pants. It's a black. Okay. And that's why I'm so excited because it's black and gray. Oh, you emo. Sh- shut up. <laughs> no, I'm not. Look, I'm showing forehead today. Wow, See, I'm not forehead an emo. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> it is crazy. To I me, don't okay? believe you that it's black pants. I think it's the shadows, like at the bo- very bottom of the poster. I don't think They're it's black. I black. I don't. I don't believe you. I don't. She has the jetpack. She has the same, uh, same shoulder pieces. Different colors for everything else. Gauntlets from season three. 
Uh, helm is repainted for purple and yellow. Uh, two two belts, black pants with gray. You see the gray part at least, right? Con link pouch. Probably another pouch oh, I, by behind her helmet. Black I, hair with purple, violet, same color. Yeah, I see it, hair. Lizzie. I just I don't see the pants. It's like right there, like well, in between the helmet and the belt. I I just the same color as the shirt. I don't. But why? It's Sabine. Let her do what she wants. She's emo now. God. She's not emo. Except it. First of all. Except it. She's not. She's a broken girl. She's not... Just... Why are they... Hmm. And she has the same elbow. Because... They don't really... Okay. Yeah, you're right. Bam. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we need new pants, Zoe. Baloney! <sighs> 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 you act like you even make the pants. I know, but there's money. Money. Because I'm getting, like, jobs now. I might have to pay for them myself now. And that's not fun. It's not even your fault. It's not your fault that they're black. I know, but I... Because <laughs> we were, like, we're... Uh... Okay, I mean, I like them. I'm just... It's, it's just another part we have to remake. <laughs> So for the armor, you only have to recolor everything else, except for only the everything pads. else. Except for the shoulder pads and the elbows, and then we just got the gauntlets from you guys today. Thank you. You're welcome. And so we're gonna paint those. To not today, maybe today. I, I have to work on my wig. Mm. I'm still trying to tell my mom that I should get a haircut like hers and then leave it be. Because it's like a brown-black. Yeah. So Are you going to? I really want to, but my mom's like, no, you're going to look like a boy. I'm like, what? Hey, why? Why? What? Um. I'd get my hair cut like that, but... I changed my I changed my mind about colors too much, so I'm just gonna get a wig. And then, plus, if, uh, if I don't, fit, cause then you have to like get it cut before you troop like all the time, cause it's an undercut in the back, which means you have to buzz it a lot, or it'll be really noticeable when it grows. So I don't think I'm gonna do that. Mm. But if it, you know, it'll work for you. So, yeah. My red buns are gonna be no more. No more. No more. Okay, so I'm gonna point. Shit. I'm gonna point this out to you because I don't really. I mean, I'm trying not to think that it means anything, but someone pointed it out to me, so I'm gonna point it out to you. But if you look on the poster, there are Tie Fighters shooting at everyone except for Hera and Chopper. I mean. You could say that for Sabine, too. That's... But you can also say that the TIE Fighters are just shooting at Lothal. Yeah, I don't know. Someone pointed the, this out to me, and I don't... I don't think it means anything. I don't... Crash into the family of rebels. <laughs> I don't mm. want to think that it means anything. So... So, I have to... Stupid pants. I mean, I can kind of see that, but not really. Wait. 
Does she still have the panels on her sleeves? Uh, doesn't look like it. So, okay, so. I thought maybe she would. Ugh. <laughs> 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 We're not even really podcasting. We're just we're like, for <laughs> all the Sabines out there that are going to do season four, like, we're doing this analyzing for you. All the analyzation for you. You're welcome. Wait, does Zeb have a weird little symbol on his chest thing? Yeah, that's what Sabine made for him in season three. It's I the know. animal that the clones caught. I never remember? even noticed that in season three. <laughs> I feel... I feel stupid now. <laughs> um, Chopper looks the same as always, because he's Chopper. In the trailer, he's like... Wasn't he like a different color? Well, yeah, but it's probably for the undercover thing that they're all going to have. Because they all had like a different what, outfit. What? Times? what? I don't remember. Because they all have like a different outfit. So maybe yeah. so I bet, I bet that repaint of Chopper is at the same time of yeah when they all have the weird hats and stuff <laughs> except the girls yeah um yeah so same shoulders yeah she's the same shoulders but everything is different and she has new pants apparently oh. And she doesn't have panels Sleep. on her sleeves, but that you can just use, reuse season two sleeves. And her elbows look orange, which doesn't match anything else. Yeah. Come I'm really on, trying please. not to like the season more than last season, because I do that every season, but it's hard. I really love it. <laughs> You know, I'm just going to own up to it. I like the season more. I decided. Okay. Okay. All right, let's stop analyzing this poster. Because like, we'll be <laughs> stuck doing that for like 30 minutes. And then it's like, oh, where'd all our time go? Um, yeah. So there's another teaser thing on Twitter. And I watched the first 10 seconds of it and decided that I'm, I'm not emotionally prepared enough to subject myself to that. So I didn't watch it. But you can watch it. I thought, I think I already watch. Okay. I saw I Sabine know. being sad, and I was like, yeah, no, I can't. Oh, yeah, I saw that. I saw it's it. It's like, yeah, I can't. It was, it was it was amazing. I'm done. I mean, we, we, we saw that episode. Yeah. I'm still sad. Okay. And then other things on Twitter that are happier is Dave Filoni tweeted some cute art. I think today, actually. And the caption is Space Family. And it's the crew. And they're chilling. Uh, I don't think we've seen that. So what I noticed is that, like, they all... I mean, you can't really see Hera and Zeb's outfits. But Ezra and Kanan both have, like, season three outfits. But... I mean, it's not, there's no colors on it, but Sabine looks like she has her season one and two hair, so. Um, you know. Yeah. But I, I love it. It's good. It's so good. Although I think it's kind of rude that Ezra's pointing something out and Kanan can't see it. It's rude. <laughs> <laughs> Kanan's right there, Ezra. It's mean. Why are you done this? <laughs> not. It's rude. We'll see each other again. <laughs> Liar. Liar. Jesus Christ. <laughs> you okay, Joey? Yeah. Why why are you done that? Because I had to wipe away a few tears. No, just kidding. You were being mean, so I just covered my face. I don't know. My I don't know. Amen. 
It's it's good. I like it. I saved it to my phone. It's beautiful. White Loth Cat and his friends at CG, CG Animation and Studio. Oh, so I am like doing a pre season four. Like, I'm rewatching all of Rebels to like get ready. And I made it through season one, but I haven't started a Fire Across the Galaxy because I'm scared. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm looking at Dave's Twitter, okay. and it's just white moth cat everywhere. Yes, it's everywhere. It's amazing. <laughs> um, yeah. It's, it's, follow sorry. the white moth cat. Yeah, and then there was a white wolf. Oh my god, it's everywhere. <laughs> and... <laughs> Yes. Okay, what? Okay. <laughs> All right, so, um, what? 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 It, it's a drawing that Dave made, and it says, Have you ever noticed how much the CN Tower in Toronto looks like one of the towers on the fall? I did. And then it's two Loth Cats looking at a Canada flag. Oh. Well, okay. But I'm doing, before Rebels, I'm, like, re-watching all of, or... Before season four, I'm rewatching all of Rebels, and I made it through season one, but I haven't started a fire across the galaxy because I'm scared. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm scared. I'm scared. You've seen it before. I know, but I'm scared. <laughs> Whenever I watch it, I make sure I have a glass of water and a pack of tissues nearby. Whenever I watch Rebels. Glass of water so when I get dehydrated after crying, I drink the water. Oh, I thought you were gonna, like... I don't know why, I thought you were gonna, like, cry into the cup. <laughs> no. Like... <laughs> anyway. Yeah. I don't think that's... Good. <laughs> no. Um, yeah. That's what I got. We're out of notes now. Uh, this makes me cry. It makes you cry? It, it's a picture that Dave drew. It's R2 projecting Leia and Ga uh, Gary Fisher's next to him. Oh. And it says, we will always remember you and the hope you inspired in a generation. Thank you, Carrie. Hmm. Okay. Moment of silence. Um. Uh. I don't. I'm out of words. Are you out of or, words? Um. I mean, I'm talking, so maybe not. <laughs> Do you have anything else to say? Oh. Uh. No. <laughs> no. Nothing for the podcast. No, just that Lorna Claus is so good at drawing and makes me want to I, cry. I know, I love it. I have, like, my phone case is hers, and I have, like, two shirts from her. It's, like, it's so beautiful. She made, like, these dolls, like, she drew on them, and then, like, it's the ones where you, like, open it up, and then you put the little yeah. one, and then you put the one, yeah. And there's one of the Lost Can, and then there's one of Tiny Dave. So. Tiny Dave. Little Dave. Ugh. And then Card Trader. I'm just looking at his stuff. Okay. Well, as much as entertaining as a podcast built around scrolling through Dave Filoni's Twitter will be, um, if we're both out of things to say, should we wrap it up? Because I don't have yeah. any more words. All right. So, uh, thank you for listening to Star Wars Geek Girl. Make sure you check out um, Stray Ember and Rebel... Um, Wow, just left my brain. Rebel, Rebel Chatter. Chatter. Yeah, thank you, Lizzie. <laughs> Rebel Chatter. And check out the bags if you have helmet. If you don't have a helmet, then you don't really need a helmet bag. You can get one. You have to know what you do with it. Anyway, make sure you check all that stuff out. It's fun. It's great. It's awesome. And uh, thank you for listening. May the Lord be with you. <laughs>